Hey, are you an investor? I want to talk to you about why cap rates don't matter. Now, before you throw stones, before you say, say I'm a lunatic and I'm crazy, don't know what I'm talking about, hang tight. I'm getting ready to explain. Hey everybody, Shane Severson. You're right, it is Tuesday. So this week's Tips Tuesday, I wanna to talk to the investors out there. And I wanna talk about this idea of cap rates and why it is a little uh, sketchy on if that's what we should be using to determine what a good investment is. Now, let me tell you, every investor, seasoned investor, every investor that, uh, that owns a couple properties, knows how to run uh, values and run spreads on what they should look at and what makes a good deal. They use this idea of a cap rate. Now, first of all, what is a cap rate? If you don't know, a cap rate is basically your net operating income. So you take your income from the rents or whatever, take out all your expenses, mostly, we're gonna talk about that, and what is that net operating income divided by the purchase price. So cap rates are range, it can be any number, it could be zero, it could be negative, it could be way high, but normally on an investment property, if you're looking at a cap rate could range anywhere from four and a half, five, to eight, nine. Um, and most investors basically say that if it's a seven, it is a good investment. So if you get a number really quickly, run the spread. Uh, if you get a seven on your cap rate, it's a good investment. That's what most people do. Now, here's the problem with cap rates. It doesn't include your mortgage payment. Go figure, it doesn't have your mortgage payment in it. So there are major holes to a cap rate. So let me explain. If you're an investor and you bought properties 10 years ago and you got a really good deal and you got a seven cap rate, what is the spread? Really what I think is important is the spread between your cap rate and your interest rate, which determines your mortgage payment. So let's talk about that. If you buy a house and it's a seven spread and 10 years ago, you had a five and a half percent interest rate for an investor, that is a one and a half percent spread. If that makes that one and a half, not percent, one and a half spread. Um, today, if you bought that same house, you it's hard to find seven cap rates because the prices have gone up so much. Rates and, and uh, the rate of the rent has gone up as well, but not quite as much as the prices have. So it's harder to find a seven cap rate. So let's say you buy a house today at a 6% cap. Many investors are gonna tell you you got a bad deal, but if you got a 6% or six cap rate and you took a three and a half percent interest rate, the spread between those two is two and a half as opposed to one and a half. So I'm here to tell you, you actually got a better deal because your rate is so much lower, your payment is so much lower and your profitability on that investment is so much higher, if that makes sense. So here's the deal, I'll tell you, I just bought a rental property. My cap was 6.2, barely over six. It doesn't look like a big deal. I've had it, I've had this conversation with many investors, uh, including my property manager, that doesn't look like a great deal. But can I tell you, on that 6.2, I am well over three three $300 cash flow. I'm at a 50% more than 50% yearly return on my investment. So you put in money, what is the yearly return on that investment? I'm well over 50% return. And I'm here to tell you that is a screaming good deal that you should be looking at. And I'm here to tell you, don't only look at cap rates if you're an investor, look at your payment, look at your interest rate, put the whole puzzle together and go buy deals deals that make a lot of sense. If you're an investor looking to buy some rentals and make a lot of money, reach out. I would love to share some more thoughts and ideas. God bless. Hope that helps. 
We'll talk to you next week.